much, Joanne. Good afternoon, everybody. A very happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Ireland make their way to the pitch at Palo Biagio, just outside Milan. There is a wonderful atmosphere. There is so much at stake, and you can see on those faces the emotion of what this day means. And, well, there is pressure, and this is significant pressure. All the pressure is on Ireland. But we are off and going, and those conditions are going to be extremely testing for Ireland as Mary Louise Riley gets the ball, but she also gets the Italians and... It's a strong scrum from the Italians and they let it go to Schiavone and they look to bring the winger Gioffi into the game but doesn't go to hand and the referee is seen not hanging around sends it on its way and the flags go up in Italy as we approach two minutes on the clock have the early lead the second row now it goes to ground and Muldoon digs it out and Stapleton and Grace Davitt back on the angle, Davitt in as one of the two changes from last week. Malloy doing her final year of medicine at the same time as playing international rugby. Ireland again find themselves on the Italian 22. Can they find a way through the first line of defence? Well, they won't be allowed because the Italians infringe. And it is to the left and wow no it's not the angle suggested it was but the touch judges were happy Set. Muldoon feeds Neville digs it out Stapleton Cantwell came back on the angle and did really well she's almost through battles her way through two or three tacklers not held entitled to get up and Muldoon can see it is there something before the break for Ireland they have players out wide here's Stapleton uh, Miller and David are there as well the ball just doesn't go to hand but Ireland still have it through Alison Miller and she turns and one of the Italian players in real trouble on, this. on its way this for the lead at half time and this time the touch judges flags stay down and that is the last action of the first half a first half that has been professional it has been committed and the grand slam is still very much there but there is work to do the halftime score just outside milan is italy three ireland three behind ireland in this second half and we're away and running and Ireland are looking for a grand slam and though there in numbers and urged on by their crowd and Ireland forced back maybe six meters away from the Italian line and they go again absolute commitment in both attack and defense from both sides as the supporters that are here are on their feet in Ireland go through the phases one after the other maybe now Muldoon considers allowing the back line have a go but the And it's there, it's there. And Ireland, in search of a ground slam, hit the front for the first time in this game. Ten and a half minutes into the second half. Ireland need to keep the composure now. Play out these final few seconds. Possession. Stacey Lee Kennedy. And to the front they go. And Riley grabs hold of it, grasps hold of the opportunity. And Muldoon fires it to touch, and is that it? Yes, it is! Ireland are the Grand Slam champions. Uh, it wasn't pretty, but it was committed, and it was courageous, and it is a wonderful day for Irish women's rugby. Winners to 2013, I'll take it any day of the week. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day, and they are the faces that tell the story, and oh, Philip Doyle, yeah. he deserves enormous credit along with the management team for what they've achieved here. This is a team that in the last seven or eight years have gone from finishing fifth and sixth in a championship to Grand Slam champions, and the tears will flow. Italy three, Ireland six. 
as Philip Doyle gets his medal and Fiona Coughlin comes next. It's the medal and it'll then be the trophy. And I've said it before on occasions like this and I'll say it again. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Ireland, the Six Nations Champions for 2013.